This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Damn. Heard you, I don't need no one to save me. I was born to be the greatest. All that time in that basement, all that time isn't wasted. Rapping, getting faded. I just wanna tell my mom that I made it. Just wanna be the topic of the conversation. Used to rock the gold plated, now I'm wearing gold chains like I'm famous. This mirror is important because this is Jaime Garzon, who was a political satire comedian, right? They killed him. Between the government and the rebels, they killed him because he wasn't afraid to talk to the rebels or the guerrillas, and he wasn't afraid to tell his two cents to the politicians either. Right. So it says, if you, the young, do not take on the direction of the country, nobody is going to save it for you. He said this in 98. 1998? He died in 1999. He oh, came wow. to Cali to talk at the university, my alma mater, Univalle University, Universidad del Valle, it's a public school on the south side of town. Um, this is in dedication to our hopefully future vice president, Francia Marquez, black woman, has no political background. She came in third place for a presidential candidate runner-up with no political background, no backing from any other politicians. She came out from, you know, from the boonies because she's like from way out there, from uh, Kauka, another state. Okay. Uh, she's always been an advocate for uh, women's rights, black rights, social justice leader. You know, she's been uh, threatened with having her life taken from her many, many times. Mm -hmm. But like I said, she was the third person to have the most votes in the first run for presidential candidates. Okay. In her party, she is the vice president uh, choice for the current man running for presidency. Got which it. is Petro, which is this guy they took out all his face and eyes and everything. People don't like him because he was once part of the ELN National Liberating Army of Colombia. Mm -hmm. So they don't believe that he'll be a good president. They actually think he's going to be like the next Maduro or Hugo Chavez from Venezuela. Oh. These are typical drinks that are made on the Pacific Coast. Let's say that it's like a uh, Liquid Viagra for men. Oh, okay. And for women, it depends on which drink you have. It could be great for cleaning out your uterus or if you want to get pregnant. Uh, today, we're going to try Tumba Catre with Chontaduro, which is an aphrodisiac fruit from here. It kind of has like a yammy taste. I'm going to see if we can try one at the farmer's market. Bottom up. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh man. Hold you. on. I'm about to take the camera Here, off for this me, one. Let me, let me record you. <laughs> there you go. This is why I got the glasses on. Uh, <laughs> Bottoms up. This one's actually kind of sweet because it's creamy based. It's good. Um, my preference is I like Tomaseca. This is great for women who have really bad cramps. Yeah. Um, pipilongo, it has it's spicy because it comes with a here we go, it comes with a um, a pepper seed that only grows on the Pacific coast. Okay, this brand is really good to buy from, they're legit. I like them, but you can usually find some in the farmer's market. Okay, um, biche curao is my actual favorite because it has like medicinal herbs and soleta. De Mercado Alameda. We're in the farmer's market. This is one of the oldest ones. I believe it's like 50, 45 years old. They actually fixed it up because the other three are a mess. <laughs>
that's what the government does with the money. You know, they just don't invest in what they need to invest. But this is like the farmers market, farmers that don't live near here or live near the city come and bring their produce usually on a Tuesday. And um, although it might be a little bit more expensive to purchase here, it's more worth it. You know that these uh, fruits and veggies and meats are coming from the farm. So technically, right. there's no like pesticides, no types of pesticides or weird chemicals or anything like that. Yeah. So so it's just so it's basically organic, right? Yeah, it's organic. Yeah. Most okay. Most of it is organic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. These women sell a bunch of stuff. Oh, honey. Permiso, que pena, So over here, like, you usually come here at 4 or 5 in the morning after party. And we like to eat at Carolina's. And the, the first one, we made Jenna, because our table is called Jenna. Jenna are blood sausage, basically. That's what it is. Come here, eat some blood sausage with ogao. Ogao is a, the basically it's like the holy trinity that we use for our food. We have your onion, your tomato, your scallions, your garlic. It's like the holy trinity or base for any type of dish, Colombian dish. We got the guy behind us again. Gotcha. Um, yeah. This stuff. This is like pumpkin. We use it a lot for our stews or creams. We use it as a base. Okay. 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 Then we have the food area, which is over here. Buenas. Buenas. Then we have your food area. There's like restaurants over here. You can sit out and have lunch here as well. I just get too hot to come in here and have lunch. <laughs> Hola, buenas. He's yeah. doing the process of making tamales. Uh, you know banana leaves from Jamaica. Right. So basically they stuff it with meat and then they put the um, they put the stuff pardon, pardon. in it so when they boil it, it turns into like one cake type of thing. Okay. Um, some of them have rice, some of them don't. Some have chicken, some have beef, some have pork. Um, nope. Tamalva Juno usually has pork and chicken. Okay. This is the end product. And you can freeze them for a later date. When you're ready to eat it, you just pop it into some hot water for like five minutes. You know, let it cook in that water and then it's done. You just unwrap it. Eat it with some rice on the side and avocado. Sometimes it might have a couple of slices of tomato. Uh, it might have a potato in there as well. It's very traditional, but each region has a different way of making tamal. Buenas. Buenas, buenas, señora. Gracias. <clears throat> they celebrated Mother's Day. So Mother's Day. All of these are different restaurants. Is pretty, uh, very affordable, honestly. Uh, the end restaurant where that bull is, though, is a Spanish restaurant, mm -hmm. and it's really good. There's, uh, they focus the, on the red and black bull, yeah. It's a okay. Spanish restaurant, so okay. they have like paella. Okay, they I just do, zoomed in so people could see it. Yeah, so, yep. they do like a Spanish style oxtail. Oh man, so a Spanish style, Spanish style oh. oxtail. It's delicious. You know, I might have to be a little bit biased, well, of though. Course. I mean, you know they ain't gonna have them. It's got bonnet on there. You know what I mean? But it was actually pretty flavorful. I feel like because we're in college. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm going to give you a gift. A gift? Yes. You okay. got one of these at home? 
Uh, it's a loofah. It's a natural loofah. It comes from the bark of a tree. Wow. So when it comes off the bark of the tree, it dries up and turns like this. Wow. And people use it to scrub yourself. Like you'll never go back to a wash rag when you use one of these. All right. So. Tell you, I'm gonna give right. you one because that's part of the tour thing. Hola, cómo estás? Yeah. I thought it was because we was cool. See, see what I'm saying? It's part it, it got, of the it just, you got to be part and of the tour. And we cool too, though. <laughs> we cool too. Choose one. Which one do you want? Uh, oh, I didn't quite get it. Cause you a big dude. Let me get this one. Lo puedes cortar en la mitad, por favor. Qué pena es que él es YouTuber en tu Instagram. I'm like, here, YouTube. In fact, just boil some water, throw, pop it in there for five minutes, and then you're ready to use it in your bathroom. Okay. So, so, so put it into. So, so, uh, put it into boiling water after five minutes. After, wait, boil the water, put it in, then after five minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, after take five it Five minutes is ready to use. It's a little bit. It's softened up. Once you get in the water, it softens up. Okay, cool. But I'm telling you, it gets all the dirt off of you. You'll never go back to a wash rag after that. I'm, I'm about you. to go light skin. That's what's about to happen. <laughs> Buenas, 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 buenas. Buenas, buenas. Buenas, buenas. Buenas, buenas. Buenas, buenas. Buenas, We're finishing the tour today. So this is a uh, farm cheese. It's from the farm. And traditionally, in the mornings, we either have coffee, black coffee, or uh, hot chocolate. If you've ever been to Mexico and had hot chocolate there, it's kind of like the same here. Um, but we like to add cheese. I'm not having hot chocolate this morning if you want a close up on what I'm drinking this is agua de panela which is similar to what we had a drink yesterday the lemonade mm -hmm. minus the lime so what you do is you heat up the water and you add the block of uh, bro the block, block of, of brown brown sugar oh brown sugar because okay. it's brown sugar without being uh I'm thinking in Spanish processed before uh, it's refined and right, granulated. Right. right. Um, Esto es la basura, ¿cierto? Señor. Okay. And when you have uh, this kind of brown sugar, it still has all of its vitamins, like vitamin C, vitamin A. Uh, it's very traditional. We use it to sweeten a lot of things. Maybe our coconut rice, our coffee in the morning. We would rather use this than actual sugar. Um, that's a traditionally made black coffee. They'll add the coffee to the brown sugar. So when you're sick, you know, like Jamaicans have hot tea, you know, with lime mm -hmm. and ginger and honey and stuff right. like that. Yep. What we do is you get your water to a rolling boil. You drop your chunk of brown sugar, of panela. In other uh, Latin places, they call it pilon or piloncillo. Mm -hmm. Um... You let it melt, you know, you're going to see it. It kind of has that effect of milk to where when it's done, it's going to start foaming up. So that's when you turn it down. You add some slices of ginger, some cloves, some cinnamon sticks. And once you have it in your cup, you squeeze some lime. And then you take your meds and drink it like that. Okay. Now, when you're not sick, you don't add the lime, you add some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And then you just have it for breakfast with... Typically, we'll have it with an arepa, with cheese as well, or just a regular arepa, or we'll have a, one of these crunchy bits over here. It's called hojaldra, and basically it's just like flour, water, maybe one egg, um, sugar, and salt. Okay. And it's just like this crispy, hard dough that you eat. It's pretty good. Um, but I prefer my dad's. They, these are good, don't get me wrong. Like, the old man here, he makes really good hojadras. I just prefer my dad's because he actually squeezes a little bit of uh, orange 
And he adds a little bit of orange peel to his. Okay, so he so a little so some citrus. <laughs> yeah, he adds a little bit of citrus. Has a little bit of citrus flavor. Okay, cool. Basically. Okay. Go ahead. All right, so over here we have the West Side of Cali. Yep. Old money, new money type of thing. Uh, it's kind of hazy today, but you see the tallest building is over there. Yep. Torre de Cali or Cali Tower. It's like up to forty-five. Uh, 45 floors I believe okay um, then we have downtown okay downtown is right over here as well yep um, then we have the middle of town right here I would call it like I guess South Central because that's like the area I live in we got our stadium right here Pascual Guerrero um, my favorite team plays there America de Cali okay Red Devils the importance of the teams in Cali is very important. There's two teams, big teams. Deportivo Cali is green. America de Cali is red. We're the Red Devils. Mm -hmm. uh, Deportivo Cali are the Azucareros. America de Cali is a team that has history. We won over 15 championships over the years. Okay. All right, some of them have been paid for. Oh, well. You know what I mean? Whatever. We had money then. Um, but... We usually play there in that stadium. They do all the big concerts there. Carol G is gonna perform there actually on a Saturday. Um, then we have the south side of Cali is down there. It's a new area. Uh, it's still being developed actually. There's more and more places popping up. We can't see the east side cause it's hazy this morning, um, but the east side is that way. Um, okay. Some people say, oh, the east side is scary. Got to be careful. I'm just going to say this. If you don't know nobody, don't go over there. <laughs> if you have somebody to take you over there, you know somebody, then yes. Go ahead. Go visit your friend over there. Go to that house party. You're going to be all right. But don't just go out there exploring by yourself. Uh, as far as black people, we're always going to blend in in Colombia. If you didn't know, there's tons of black people out here, y'all. But you're going to blend in in Colombia regardless. Mm -hmm. If you don't open your mouth, you wouldn't know. People wouldn't know that you're not from here. <laughs> but, okay, so the Black Music Festival, when they do it, they do it over here where those two big buildings are right here. Yep. That's the cycle drone. Cycle dome. Because mm -hmm. we're good at cycling out here. Right. And swimming as well. Um, and skating. We have really great skaters, cyclists, and swimmers as well. We have a Red Bull diving champ. He was the champ in 2013 or 14. Mm, okay. Um, damn, I can't remember his name, but I know we share the same birthday. He's from Cali. He's from here. Um, when they do the Black Music Festival, it's usually in the parking lot area. Okay. There's like a blank space right there. I don't know if you see it. But it, yeah. it, it, it looks small from here, but it's huge. That area is huge. It's a huge complex. Um, Cali is the major city where we do lots of sports. We hold mm -hmm. a lot of sporting events here. Uh, we hosted the Junior Pan American Games at the end of the year last year. We hosted the World Games back in 2014. That's like the baby sister of the Olympics. Got it. Um, and it was great. Uh, I was able to volunteer for that. Cristo Rey, or Christ King. This is some history about Christ King that we have up here. Um, so the... How do I say sacerdote? Uh, a Jesuit priest mm -hmm. uh, named Jose Maria Artiaga was the guy that directed this work of art from 1949 to 1953. The sculptures that were in charge were the brothers, Italian brothers, Adelindo y Alideo Tazioli. They signed their name right there. 1953, okay? It weighs 464 tons, and its height is 26 meters, including the five meters of the pedestal. That's five meters? I'm short. <laughs> I don't know what it is in inches or feet, y'all. Just do the conversion. 
Uh, it was inaugurated October 25th, 1953. Its final cost was 170,000 pesos, which would be equivalent to like, maybe like $50 now mm -hmm. in, yep. in our current money. Yep. Look, he just made it up here. Mm -hmm. just made, oh, we just passed him on the way up. Awesome. Um, the image was made or erected to commemorate 50 years of peace after the 1,000 Days War. Mm -hmm. uh, it's administered by Parks and Recreations in Cali. Um, now, some curious facts of Christ King. Now, up here it says a, a hug with Caleño sentiment or feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, Caleño means you're from Cali. Mm -hmm. I'm a Caleña. I'm an adopted Caleña because I'm technically from Buenaventura. Um, so, curious facts. This monument for Christ King is only 12 meters off of the one in Brazil. Mm, so, okay. they're really not too far off from each other. Right. Um, 35 tons of steel, 1,000 sacks of cement, and 100,000 liters of water were transported up here to create this. <laughs> Back then, in 1953, there weren't more than 60,000 people living in Cali. Um, it is 8.5 kilometers of distance from here to downtown. Um, and it sits 100, I mean, 1,440 meters above sea level. About 290, 300,000 people come and visit this annually. We're at Museo La Perú. Yeah, aka the our version of the MoMA <laughs> uh, Museum of Modern Art and we're looking at a mural that is talking about the beauty and I guess the curse of being from areas of the Pacific Coast like Buenaventura as it says up here you have your rivers that source the jungles because going towards Buenaventura, you have a lot of jungle and mountains there. Um, and remember, I told you earlier, we went to a, a old, um, an old Afro-Colombian gold mining town in these areas. So in the mural, of course, they're showing you how illegal mining is destroying the natural rivers in the area. Um, we have our Chontaduro here. Next time you come, we'll have to try this and see if you like it. It's an aphrodisiac. Um, it has like a yammy taste. People, people either like it or don't like it. I love it. I love it with honey, salt, and lime. It's delicious. It's just a great like snack and nutritious as well. Aside from the fact that it's an aphrodisiac. Um, you have your different flora, your different fauna. You have your mother earth. Um, here we have conflict. These are the rebels throwing people into the water, innocent people or even their own people. You have the black woman who has, who is the backbone of the world, <laughs> basically. You have more rebels and fear here. And it's a lot of the things that we go through as being Afro-Colombians in areas where the government doesn't care about us, basically. Um, this is Buenaventura's nickname, okay? As you can see, the spelling, Buenaventura, up there, it has three, it has like several nicknames. You could call it Tuda, by itself, T-U-R-A, or I might write it with a B. And then a dash and write Tuda on the side just to not write the whole word. Um, there was a famous rapper from Buenaventura. Unfortunately, he was shot dead last year um, around June, like right before his birthday. He was also a social activist. Um, he was actually about to release his new uh, album and ended up getting shot going into the club that day. Horrible. And it happened here at Kylie, unfortunately. I have to tell the reality of things. Every, I can't sugarcoat it. Um, again, the black woman, 
putting everything on their back. Y'all know what it is. If it was for black women in this world, um, I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but it's the truth. And then you have the strength of black people right here. You have your strength, our day to day, trying to be strong, trying to get over all this conflict and things that are brought upon us. Our happiness, our music, our meals. This is the showcase of basically Pacific Coast. A lot of what you see here is a lot of what happens up and down the Pacific Coast. There's a lot of rebels trying to take over the area. It's a rich area with jungles, with minerals, with fresh water. Then you have the sea as well. Uh, the thing about the rebels is um, it's the drug trafficking. It's an easy route to get to Panama and other places of the world. It's a horrible drug route. I'm sending everybody homework. If you have Netflix, watch The Business of Drugs and watch the first episode. It talks about Buenaventura and drug trafficking and why it is one of the most important routes in the world. All right, hey y'all, we're in the cat park in Cali. It's just a nice place to come and take a stroll next to the river. It's dirty again, that means it's raining up top on the mountain. Um, hasn't really cleared up. Uh, what can I tell you about the story of the cat park? It's one big cat by uh, an artist. His name was, yeah. I know his last name is Tejada. Um, his ashes are actually buried inside the cat. Um, but there's a huge cat statue at the end of this walk. And the rest of these felines, they're females. And they're extravagant looking because they're trying to get his attention. But I don't know how he's going to get their attention if his back is towards them. <laughs> because hmm. his, back, his back is towards all of these cats. Um... I want to say they fixed up this park around 2011, 2012. Um, you saw at the boulevard there's a couple of different cats as well. But this is like the main area where you see all the cat culture. We got our little Hellraiser cat right here. This is one of my favorites. Don't touch me. <laughs> um, they all have different names. And they all have different artists. None of these are made by the same artist. Some of these artists are from Cali, from Colombia, or from Brazil or Mexico. Some of these artists, they've been living in Cali for a while. And a lot of these artists, they, are, uh, they have their art on display here. They have displayed their art and their sculptures around the world and around Colombia.
I remember sometimes I forget. Um, oh, there's a beach over there. Stupid braces don't let me whistle right now. 